Hey folks, Lisa here from Call That Girl with another quick video of the day. Today's video is understanding Windows 11 and OneDrive. Many of my clients call me after setting up their computers and they don't know anything about OneDrive and how it works. So I give them a quick tutorial and that's what I'm gonna be covering with you in this video today. All right, let's get started. You can follow along with the pink circle here. I'll try to go as slow as I can. You can always rewind if you need to see the screen again. So let's start down here at the bottom of the screen. You will see the Windows icon, the search bar. This is a desktop um, icon. I don't use that. And then the applications that you want to use down here. Just like in other windows, you can right click and pin it down here or unpin it. So the first thing I'm going to have you do is go down to your search right here. And at the top, type account. And you're going to see down here at the bottom, your account info. We want to take a look at this screen right here. And I'm going to do a little explaining on what all this is. So when you're setting up your Windows 11 computer, it asks you to sign in with a Microsoft account or create one. I always recommend to my clients that you create a new account instead of logging in with a current Microsoft account unless you are completely aware of what's going to happen with this computer and the account. A lot of people don't know. So I just say, hey, there's no harm in creating a brand new account for this. You can name it whatever you like. As you can see, I did a little Lisa NVX 365 at Outlook.com. This is an NV computer. I just put the X in there and it's uh, 365. That's what I do a lot of. So I just gave it a little Microsoft Windows account just for this computer. So I know when I set this up, this is gonna have a OneDrive that is empty because I did not have any data in this account before. Now you might ask me, Lisa, why would I not log in with a current email? Well, there are two reasons for that. One is that you might have a business account with that email. And if you log in with your business email here, when you're setting up Windows 11, it's gonna create a personal account for you as well. And that can get a little complicated in the computer. You're gonna have two OneDrives, to everything and you might have to you know configure it differently there's problems with outlook and so i just tell people just to create a blank new account for this this is only for logging into windows we can remove a lot of this later and we'll set it up fresh with your business accounts after we're done so let's just take the mouse down here and come down to the accounts area and you can see right here that it's taking, excuse me, it's taking you to a live.com account that switches to Microsoft. I'm going to hit no thanks there. Now you can see when I clicked on that button, it takes you to the online account. And this is, close that there. This is a Microsoft personal account. This is what it looks like. The business accounts look completely different. So you'll know also if you went to your services right here, you would know if you had any subscriptions, which I do not because I only created it for Windows 11. So I'm gonna close this window quick. And so let's say you did want to log in with a Microsoft account that you have on another computer and you know you use that personal OneDrive, then you're absolutely fine logging into your Windows 11 computer with that same account. I'm gonna show you next how you'll know. So I'm gonna take the mouse and come down to the system tray here. And there's a OneDrive icon. You're going to right click and come up to settings. Now up here, this is the OneDrive that came with my Windows 11 by default. You can see it says personal and right there is the account information. I always take a look at this when I help people with OneDrive so I know what account I'm working with. And if you're not sure, so let's say you have a business email and a personal account with the same email, you can always click on get more storage and it's gonna log you in to, well, it used to. <laughs> Oops, I'll close out of there. Um, interesting, well, this did change and that happens sometimes. Usually you can click on this and it takes you to this, uh, well, it's not there right now, but we're gonna come down here again. There it is. It'll take you right to this personal account, so you know. So back to the OneDrive accounts up here, you can go up to, the settings, settings here, and again, check to see which account. If you have two OneDrive icons in your taskbar down here, 
in the system tray. The personal one is always white gray and the business is always dark blue. This may look confusing because it's dark blue up there, but you can you would see it down here in the system tray if it was business, it would be dark blue. So now that we've covered the login with Windows 11 and the OneDrive, we're gonna open up the File Explorer window here. Now I'm gonna give you a little tour of, this is just like when you first set up your computer, you're gonna see all these new icons up here. Go ahead and double click. And so this is a documents folder, but it is not the C drives documents that you normally would have in a user profile. If you put the mouse right here, well, again, that changed on me. Let me come in here, see what I got. So now when you click in the address bar up there, you can see it says call that girl OneDrive documents outlook files. This is what you'll see is this OneDrive is kind of the replacement for the C drive documents and it has its own documents. But if you were to come down here to this PC and come here and go to users, and we'll go to this one. There's a documents here that the path is just the user profile documents. This is where by default online backup programs typically get this data. They don't always get the one in the OneDrive and I'm gonna cover that next and how to get the OneDrive documents into an online backup. But this is why when I've helped you or you know, you've seen me do work maybe, I always make sure that I put Outlook files in the documents because Outlook files cannot be in the OneDrive documents because it's constantly synchronizing. And Outlook does not like that for its PST files. So just to recap over here, you've got your this PC, which I always go into here. Sometimes you come over here and you're gonna see the status bar listed. So the status over here shows a cloud and a cloud and a cloud. That means all the data that you transferred over from OneDrive or imported into the computer is cloud only. This is fine for people who have very small hard drives and want to use the OneDrive on two or more computers. OneDrive to me is a file synchronizing program. I don't sell it as backup. Okay, and I'll explain why in a little bit, but I sell it as a file synchronizing program. The cloud here says it's in the cloud and you can come to the desktop here. I don't have any data but I'm gonna come back and come over here. Now see this uh, green with the circle when it's white in the middle, that means it's been opened in the computer. And if you were to right click and show more options. And now of course, I don't see what I need to see again. It always happens while making a video, but I'm not gonna stop. I gotta keep going. Well, it is now missing and that is a little frustrating. You're supposed to be able to keep it on the device. By the way, um, it should be there, okay? <laughs> keep on this device, but of course it's not. That's interesting. Well, let's go find out. Maybe I need to do something else here. Yeah, this is how it goes in tech world. You go to do something and you make a video and it's not there. Well, I might have to come back to that. But, uh, but anyway, if this was a dark green instead of a white in the middle, that means that it is downloaded to the computer. You can then take the computer offline and you can use it, um, you know, in, in places that don't have internet. You could open the files. You could open it on a plane. But if it only has the cloud, you cannot open it without the internet. So that's real important to know. And what else is real important to know is like Carbonite cannot back up cloud only files. So for people that have two computers and they want, you know, maybe just Carbonite to back up one of the computers, I recommend you take the main computer and you, like I said, you right click and, you know, um, maybe, yeah, it's still not there. It's weird. If you right click and say always on device, then it'll download and then you can add that to Carbonite. And, you know, you might not see the green dot that Carbonite has, but uh, I believe it does back up. I did see a client today that um, everything was in Carbonite, but it wasn't, um, didn't have the Carbonite little green or orange dot. So anyway, that was uh, interesting to learn today. So now let's say that you uh, you are like, okay, Lisa, I don't need a bunch of stuff in 
uh, the OneDrive because I'm not synchronizing it and there's no need, okay? So what you can do is come to the OneDrive here. You do have to have it downloaded uh, locally. There it is. Always keep on device. And don't ask me why the other ones didn't have it. But you right click, always keep on device. It turns to the dark green button. And at this point, if you don't need it in the OneDrive, you can, oops, you can take it and drag it to the other documents. And I'm going to show you a little trick here that I do as I come in here and see this path right there. I come to quick access. I right click, pin the current one. So your OneDrive documents has this little thing there. Your computer one has the orange folder. So you can come over here. We'll go back to documents, the Zoom. Now that I've downloaded this, you can just take it and drag it right there. It gets out of the OneDrive. And we're going to hit yes. And it goes to the C Drive documents. And now they're local here. And you can see that uh, at that point, you could install Carbonite. And it would back that up a little bit better than the OneDrive. So let's say you set up your computer and you just created the, uh, you know, the, the, the new account I told you to make. And you're like, okay, so now I want to bring over my data from my other computer. Uh, first thing you can do is get an external hard drive, save it on the external hard drive, always copy, never cut, come over here. It'll pop up the external drive over here. You can open it, see your data. And then I recommend that you make a decision before you copy it to the computer. You either want it in the OneDrive personal account, which would sync with other computers and devices, be cloud-based, and you can have it downloaded locally, or you want to keep it only in the computer. This is the only one and save it to Carbonite or what other program you're using. That's why I tell people to do it manually. Don't use an uh, importing tool. It's going to probably get messy. And then you got to rework all your data anyway. But if you did, excuse me, if you did not know, it's probably going to take it right to the OneDrive personal because at this point, Microsoft wins. It's their product and that's how it's configured. So let's say at this point, you're like, Lisa, you know what? I don't want the OneDrive. So you're kind of like stuck and you're like, I don't know how to get rid of it. So I'm going to show you a few things that I do to remove the OneDrive from the computer. So the first thing you do want to do is make sure all the data has been taken out of OneDrive, okay? So at this point, you would come to the OneDrive documents, make sure all of these are dark green. And I always say to be safe, you can just copy them and put them over here in this documents over there. If you're like, I don't want it in the cloud at all, and you feel comfortable, then just cut them out and put them in here yourself, okay? So you're literally taking all the data out of the OneDrive, which you can do. Once you feel good that everything's been taken out and preserved and saved properly, then you can come down here to the OneDrive tap um, in the system tray, come over here, come back up to the settings, quit OneDrive, and you're gonna close it. So now it's gone from the computer, so this should not be um, syncing anymore, but it's still not there and it's still not gone. Then you wanna come over to the control panel, and come in here and uh, uninstall program, come down to OneDrive, uninstall it. And then it's gonna uninstall, so then the program will be gone. If you do this, just keep in mind that all OneDrive accounts connected are gonna be removed. You can always reinstall it with your business OneDrive if you want, and that's fine as well. Um, if you're using SharePoint to sync, this is going to remove those links as well. So now you're going to see it's gone. Okay. But there's still remnants of it. <laughs> Not surprised, right? So then there's other things we can do to completely um, strip it out. But as you'll see, it does leave a little folder in here. Right there. And this is, um, if you can, you know, try to delete it, you can. Um, that's just something that is, uh, I tell people to hope for the best. Sometimes you can't. There are some, some tools in the registry you can do to change this. But the last thing I do want to tell you is if you did all that and remove it, then you have to make sure that your OneDrive, or excuse me, your Word and Excel and all that are not linked to that old path. And I'll show you how to do that right now.
So if you have Word open, come over to uh, Home, New, Open. Come down to Options at the bottom. Go to Save. And see right here that Windows is still pointed to OneDrive. So you can go ahead and delete that and keep it right there. And now when you go to New and Open and save it, get that in there. A little hard to do with this uh, pointer. You go to File, Save As, Browse. It picks the Documents folder instead of the OneDrive. So that is uh, kind of cool to do and do that for Excel, PowerPoint, and all your documents. So those are kind of the four things you need to do. And yes, this is sometimes hard to delete because it's in the registry. So I tell people you can try to delete it, but it might not work, but we'll try. See what happens. Yeah, might not work. Yeah, I don't think it's going to work, <laughs> but I have got rid of it before. But unfortunately, if you've already set up Windows 11, there's not much you can do about that, but you can just do everything to disconnect it. Now, as a final tip, when you are setting up your Windows 11 computer, there is an option for you to not create an account and have local OneDrive only, or it'd be local. I'm sorry. I think it says uh, don't use OneDrive, use local folders only. That will not install the OneDrive and will not connect it. They just added that in the last few months, probably, I think. So the old one used to force it. Now you have an option. So just remember during the setup wizard to don't do the online syncing with the OneDrive. And that might not even happen then for you. So folks, I think that's about it for the video today. Uh, I did cover everything I'm familiar with. And when I'm helping people, it goes a little faster or a little slower because I actually have to deal with real data. But if you need any help, feel free to call me 612-865-4475. Or you can email me, Lisa, at callthatgirl.biz. And if you check the links below, you can schedule time and get on my calendar. Thanks.